Hello and thank you for joining us. This is Bob Cohn with Spectrologic. As many of you may know, Spectrologic uh, has been a long-standing contributor in the world of encryption key management. As a matter of fact, we were one of the first tape library manufacturers to actually integrate encryption key management into the actual tape library. That was way back in 2005 with our BlueScale encryption key management solution. And as a matter of fact, we still offer that BlueScale encryption key management, which is a great solution for many people in many cases and many scenarios. However, if you are looking at a scenario where you possibly have multiple key servers or multiple data centers and need a more distributed uh, form of key management, some of the features in Tivoli's Key Lifecycle Manager certainly lend themselves to that sort of application. So it is my pleasure today to introduce John Hiles, Senior Product Manager with Spectralogic, who will be presenting on Spectra's integration of Tivoli Key Lifecycle Manager. John Hiles, are you with us? Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. Um, if, uh, if any of you are familiar with uh, the Tivoli Key Lifecycle Manager from IBM, I'll just let you know right out of the gate that uh, Spectra is reselling this product from IBM. If you're not already familiar with Tivoli Key Lifecycle Manager, a lot of the information today uh, should be new to you. Um, and the reason that uh, we're uh, talking about Tivoli Key Lifecycle Manager today is because uh, Spectra just began uh, uh, releasing this for resale at uh, the end of October uh, in support of its uh, LTO and TS 1140 drives across its entire library product portfolio. With that, today we're going to talk very briefly about the general uh, problem of data security that Spectra TKLM addresses. We will talk about the product uh, in more specificity. We'll cover a little bit uh, of information on availability, installation support. We'll talk uh, briefly about some additional resources, uh, target markets or users uh, that might benefit from Spectra TKLM, and then we'll go ahead and open up the uh, venue for a question and answer. So data security, if you go out and uh, do a little searching through the, uh, the information provided by the Privacy Rights Clearinghouse, one of the things you'll, you'll find is since 2005, roughly 20 million different records have been breached that have been on tape, and nearly 300 million records have been breached of all kinds, whether that's tape, disk, portable devices, uh, websites, etc. cetera. Uh, truth be known, these numbers are a little bit understated because in many cases, the uh, firm or organization that suffered the breach doesn't know exactly how many records were actually breached. So these are conservative estimates. Given the fact that there's a lot of this information that's been exposed uh, publicly and wi in widespread cases, uh, there's obviously been a tremendous amount of legislation and regulation written to help consumers uh, and users protect personal and biometric data. Obviously, HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, Graham-Leach-Bliley uh, were pieces of federal legislation that came out early. Uh, in addition to that, a number of states uh, put privacy rights and, and uh, data security legislation on their books, uh, including Massachusetts, Illinois, Nevada, California, New York, and Connecticut among the initial movers. As of August this year, 46 different states and four U.S. territories all have data breach laws on their books to try to help uh, secure personal data. Once you get beyond the federal and state levels, you also got a lot of uh, industry concerns that are propagating rules, regulations, requirements, et cetera, with regard to uh, the security of, of data, whether that's uh, personal or business. The payment card industry data security standards is probably the foremost. Uh, if you are dealing in credit card transactions of any kind, you're going to have a lot of sensitive information. Uh, chances are excellent you're going to have to, to uh, adhere to PCI DSS standards uh, as just a function of your business. Below the industry standards groups, obviously a lot of organizations also have corporate or internal security requirements that may go well above and beyond any of the federal, state, or industry uh, standards that they also have to adhere to. So at the end of the day, there are a lot of people to answer to. There are a lot of things to take into consideration, uh, all in the name of keeping data secure. That gets us down to the actual encryption itself. Once you get beyond the general standards and guidelines that you have to meet, now you've got to start looking at some of the operational uh, issues that are involved in encrypting data. First and foremost, is make certain you get it encrypted, but don't lose the keys. Losing the keys typically results in fairly hefty payroll deductions for the people who lost them, and so you don't want to go there. 
Of course, you want the key management to be as simplified as possible. You don't want to have to spend a lot of time on it or a lot of overhead. The, the uh, encryption key management solutions are typically best served if they can scale across as much of your environment as possible. This helps eliminate islands of automation and a lot of redundancy. And at the end of the day, encryption is like insurance. You don't want it to cost too much. It's got to do its job, but it can't break the bank. Spectre TKLM addresses all of these issues. It safeguards your data against breaches or losses. It uses AES-256 level encryption and provides a secure automatic uh, key distribution system uh, across your library and tape environment. It does so through a secure key management platform. It encrypts the keys, whether they're in storage or in transmission. It uh, authenticates devices to which keys may be served from the key manager, it provides uh, various levels of role-based access control, uh, and it provides a full range of key lifecycle management and audit trail capabilities so you know what the status of the keys are, where they've been, who's been touching them, and so forth. All of these lend to uh, helping ensure that your data security environment is as solid as it possibly can be. At the end of the day, it's also got to be simple and an automated key distribution. You don't want to spend a lot of time having to manage the day-to-day -day operation. It's a policy-driven implementation uh, where you can apply policies to keys, devices, users, and groups of any of those, uh, those, those items. It also provides a level of automatic synchronization with uh, TKLM 2.0.1 as well as the capability to simply back up from one server to the next. So it's simple, it's automated, it's secure, it safeguards your data, it hits all those initial points uh, that can be problematic for some users. For other users, they've also got various uh, requirements, uh, compliance requirements to meet above and beyond usability. Things such as Federal Information Processing Standards requirements, or FIPS. TKLM uh, uh, provides a FIPS level operating mode. So you can select that and have a FIPS 140-2 level 1 uh, compliant key manager serving your keys. Some customers are also looking for uh, industry interoperability, some sort of standardization that's going to allow their key manager to expand over time and serve an ever larger number of devices and be able to exchange keys with other key managers. The Organization for the Advancement of Structured Information Standards has propagated a key management interoperability protocol, the OASIS KMIP. Spectra TKLM is compliant with the OASIS KMIP. Uh, it's something that uh, the vast majority of industry players have participated in and signed on to. So as more vendors uh, move to adopt and implement the KMIP protocols, it means that key managers such as Spectra TKLM are going to be uh, more flexible and more diverse with regard to the environments of, into which they can serve keys. Key managers also need to be scalable. That's been an issue for um, a lot of users for a long period of time. They might get a key manager that's good for this piece of tape or that disk device or some other end user device, uh, or, or they might get a key manager that's only good for one library or uh, the second library. A lot of different scenarios are out there, but typically what has happened is it's resulted in islands of encryption key management scattered across the data center environment. This is not efficient, typically not effective, and as a general rule of thumb, it also opens up lots of opportunities for errors to occur. So by invoking a scalable encryption key manager uh, like Spectra TKLM across your tape library environment, uh, you can eliminate a lot of those multiple instances uh, and serve uh, thousands of devices and millions of keys across a number of different sites and do it from a single point of management. This reduces administrative overhead, reduces the opportunity for error. And finally, because you're getting a lot of these things, it's also economical. You don't have to purchase numerous key managers. You don't have to have a lot of different service contracts. Uh, you don't have to have a lot of different administrators uh, dealing with each one of these individually. By simplifying and consolidating, you can keep the cost of your encryption key management solution as low as possible. Having stepped through the uh, general benefits that address the pain points of encryption users, uh, we can talk a little bit more about the product specifically now. Spectra TKLM Encryption Key Manager is actually a software application provided by Spectra. 
um, and it is going to be hosted on a customer provided server. Some folks have asked, well, why didn't you simply provide us an appliance? And the reason we didn't do that is because we wanted users to have the flexibility to host the key manager on whatever platform they may have available or that they prefer. As a result of this, we're going to provide them a software package. In that package, the TKLM package, they're going to get a Tivoli Key Lifecycle Manager, a Java runtime error, uh, excuse me, Java runtime environment, and a DB2 database. You can see uh, in the gray box below uh, a little more specific software requirements as well as hardware requirements for the server uh, needed to host this software. Uh, you'll probably notice that these uh, requirements on the server hardware are not terribly extensive, which means you have a lot of variability and a lot of variety with regard to the, the host appliance that you put the software on. During the initial setup, though, you're, there are going to be two pieces that we'll walk through here very briefly. Uh, you will need to set up the library side of it through the blue scale interface on the SpectraLogic library, but ultimately you will manage the keys to the TKLM server interface, and there will be some screenshots of that here shortly. What you see here is simply an example diagram, very simplified version uh, of a network installation of Spectra TKLM uh, for a large customer that needed to have a shared environment with a legacy uh, encryption and key management solution. In this particular case, it was a fabric-based legacy key manager, uh, and they had to have that uh, retained in-house to access legacy data. However, they wanted a more robust, flexible, uh, and, and uh, newer encryption key management solution that provided a lot of the compliance requirements they were looking for, and that happened to be Spectra TKLM. In this particular environment, uh, the library was partitioned into a Spectra TKLM-based encryption partition uh, and a Fabric-based key manager encryption partition. This way they could still access all of the legacy data until it had aged out using uh, the former encryption key manager while putting all their new data on the Spectra TKLM key manager in its specific partition within the library. This gives them great deal of flexibility as they age out the older data and allows them to be on a key management uh, platform that's going to give them scalability and usability for many, many years to come um, as it and the standards within the industry evolve. What you see on this slide is a sample set of the Spectra TKLM feature set that any user can expect to, uh, to receive uh, when they invoke this particular solution. I'm not going to go through all the bullets individually. Uh, there's probably not enough time in the day to discuss all of those very specifically, but we have already touched on a number of them. The multi-library, multi-site management, CAM IP compliance, FITS compliance. We mentioned briefly that it's supporting both LTO and TS 1140 tape drives. You can um, generate and manage over a million keys with this solution, although you don't have to. We do have users who want but a single key at least to start. You can have a key per tape. Some users need that, others do not. Again, flexibility is the name of the game here with the Spectra TKLM, so you can customize the implementation to your specific needs. One thing that I do want to uh, kind of touch on uh, is the uh, graphical user interface and the command line interface capabilities of Spectra TKLM. A lot of the uh, fundamental uh, setup and operations will be done through the graphical user interface, but if you need something a little more secure or specific, you may be able to access that through the command line interface as a preference in order to get that operation completed. This gives you a lot of flexibility once more in terms of the way you set up your environment, how you operate it, and who has access to it. Beyond that, uh, Spectra TKLM uh, allows for a wide variety of operations from third party uh, you know, data and key sharing via symmetric and asymmetric keys. Uh, full range of backup, restore, and redundant capabilities, complete life cycle key management so you know the status of your key at any point in time, whether that's creation, uh, whether it's in use, whether it's been compromised, destroyed, etc. And for some users, having an audit trail uh, is particularly important to understand uh, what's been happening with the keys, who've accessed them, how many copies of the keys there may or may not be, and so forth. At the end of the day, the feature set that is very, uh, that's provided by Spectra TKLM is extraordinarily rich and allows a particular user to set up 
uh, security requirements or, or, or uh, security response to the requirements handed down by the security officer that, that meets the particular needs of that organization. The next several slides are going to be some of the user interface slides, both from a blue scale standpoint with regard to setting it up at the library level, as well as the initial setup slides on the uh, TKLM server. Once this TKLM uh, server software has been implemented on the host, the next thing that the user will need to do is access or set up the uh, Spectra TKLM library to see and access the Spectra TKLM uh, instance. In this particular case, going to uh, the front panel uh, or the remote login for the library, they can go to the uh, main viewer screen and uh, scroll down to the encryption icon, which is shown at the lower left-hand side of the column. Uh, log in through that, and now they will have the opportunity to select uh, Spectra TKLM uh, encryption on the library so they can begin the setup to connect the library to the Spectra TKLM server. The next screen you see is the, uh, the Spectra TKLM screen within the BlueScale interface on the library, uh, which allows the user to go ahead and start plugging in the IP addresses of the TKLM servers that are going to be in use and set the, the port count. Uh, for access to those servers. Once that's done, then they can verify by pinging the servers the fact that there's actually connectivity between the library and the Spectra TKLM instance, wherever it may be in their environment. Once that's done, the, and the connection is established between the library and the TKLM server, uh, the next step is for the user to go ahead and uh, move into the uh, partition configuration uh, component of the library management interface. At this point in time, you can see that there are a variety of uh, options for uh, selecting encryption within the library, either on a partition by partition basis or across the library as a whole with its, uh, the single partition. They can select no encryption whatsoever invoked, which is the default. They can select Spectra TKLM encryption, which we were talking about uh, today. Or they can uh, select a form of blue scale encryption key management, which is a standard provision on any of our libraries if they choose to do that. They can also share the library uh, uh, amongst both blue scale encryption as well as Spectra TKLM encryption simply by invoking uh, one type of encryption on one partition and a different type of encryption on a different partition. Uh, this is the type of situation that the uh, user diagram that we uh, walked through earlier demonstrated, only in that case it was with Spectra TKLM and a legacy fabric-based encryption key manager. Uh, it's, it's a little bit unusual for a vendor to be able to uh, provide a library that shares encryption key management platforms, but SpectraLogic does this, again, uh, for the purposes of flexibility, ease of use, and uh, the capability to migrate from a legacy implementation uh, to a newer encryption key management platform. Once the library has been set up and the partition uh, uh, has, has been configured for encryption, then the user would uh, move over to the Spectra TKLM uh, server interface. Uh, what you see here is the login screen for that. Once they've logged in at that screen, then they get to uh, start working through the actual configuration and setup of Spectra TKLM. Given the number of configurations and the great degree of variability uh, offered by this solution, we're not going to go through all these screens, but I did want to give you some indication of what the user interface looked like and how uh, a user could get started uh, setting up Spectra TKLM. Uh, the first screen you see here is uh, simply the uh, initial screen to get started to uh, create the master key store. And the next screen here is the screen that shows how that's actually done. If you notice on the left-hand side, there's the Tivoli Key Lifecycle Manager and a Settings button, both of which those can be exploded out uh, to see the full range of, of uh, feature uh, sets and configuration and management capabilities offered uh, through Spectra TKLM. Again, as I said, uh, the number of features that we could step through would take far more than the time allotted today, so uh, we're only going to go through these first couple of screens. If you have additional uh, questions or information you would like uh, to see on this, please let us know and we can certainly get that to you. Now that we've talked about the product in general, uh, the next thing we want to talk about a little bit is uh, availability. Uh, we announced the availability of this product at the very end of October. We've begun shipping Spectra TKLM to our uh, initial customers. So it's available today. 
It's compatible with LTO5 and newer LTO tape drives, so it'll be compatible uh, with 6 here. Uh, it's also compatible with the TS1140 and newer uh, drives within that 3592 drive family. Spectra TKLM can be used across the entire portfolio of spectrologic libraries from our smallest T50E 50 slot library up to our largest Tfinity library that scales out to over 50,000 LTO slots. From a migration standpoint, for our uh, legacy users, um, you know, if, if someone still has a, an enterprise key manager platform uh, on their floor, they can migrate to Spectra TKLM. Or if they've got TKLM instance uh, that's a, a step above EKM, they can also migrate to Spectra TKLM. Uh, so if you've got a, a legacy encryption key manager of some kind sitting on the floor, uh, we do have solutions available either for direct migration or for a shared library repository uh, that will allow you to continue using and accessing older encrypted data while putting new data onto uh, uh, Spectra encryption uh, key management platforms such as uh, Spectra TKLM. From a support and installation standpoint, uh, we offer a couple of uh, PS installation packages to go along with this, the first of which is the basic package. Some users out there, when they get started with encryption, know that they need to have a very simple and fundamental solution put on the floor. They also know that at some point in time in the future, they may have to expand that to something that's a little bit more complex. In those cases, we offer a basic installation, which is going to provide the user with a single instance of TKLM uh, at a single site, probably for a single library, maybe a couple of libraries. We have a standard statement of work for that. Uh, and a base price on the professional services uh, installation that goes along with it. Uh, for more information on that, you can contact your local Spectralogic sales representative. However, for a lot of customers, they have very unique environments. They have very unique requirements. That being the case, we also have custom implementations for uh, this solution. Uh, and those are typically invoked when a customer is looking at multiple sites, multiple instances of TKLM, multiple libraries. Uh, they want various uh, server failover options with regard to TKLM. Uh, they may have a lot of specific security requirements, uh, key rotation policies, key management policies, things of that nature uh, that are, once again, unique to them, in which case they're going to have a very specific customer implementation uh, with a custom statement of work. As a general rule of thumb, at that point in time, uh, we ask uh, customers to uh, consult with their uh, spectra of professional services uh, people to ensure that they get the implementation that's tailored to their specific needs. From a resource standpoint, uh, there are a number of documentation uh, items as well as websites that are available uh, from which to get uh, information on Spectra's TKLM. We do have FAQ information that's available. We've got various brochures that are available. We've got a uh, implementation best practice guide uh, and, and uh, information from that that's available. And of course, at the end of the day, there's also plenty of information from the TKLM Information Lifecycle Center, uh, which is a web-based platform provided by IBM that covers a great deal of TKLM information. One of the things we also wanted to touch on very briefly were some of the Spectra TKLM users and, and markets that may benefit from uh, an implementation such as this. There are customers out there who bought Decru or NeoScale encryption key management uh, and encryption uh, appliance solutions uh, five, six, seven years ago. Some of these solutions have subsequently been purchased by NetApp and Encypher and then uh, fails beyond that. In many cases, these solutions are going end of life or going end of service or uh, reaching a, a point in time and age where they need to be rolled to a new solution of some kind or other. And these users are looking for something that meets the requirements they have in terms of scalability, usability, FIPS compliance, um, standards interoperability, uh, and manageability. And for these customers who are facing these kinds of deadlines to get off of their legacy environments and into something new, uh, Spectra TKLM is, uh, you know, a very solid choice. Also, there are users out there with multiple libraries and multiple sites who don't want any islands of encryption key management any longer and therefore are looking for something that they can manage from a single pane of glass. For these folks, Spectra TKLM is also a very solid option. When you start talking about specific markets, 
Um, you know, the finance, healthcare, insurance, retail, consumer, and manufacturing environments are all uh, very rich uh, environments in which uh, a Spectra TKLM encryption key management solution would be applicable. This is typically due to a number of the regulatory requirements that we spoke through uh, earlier in the presentation. To recap the benefits uh, of Spectra TKLM, uh, it does safeguard data against breaches or loss. Uh, Spectra TKLM, uh, as a, as a, a resold a product from IBM, uh, has been in the market for a number of years. A great number of installations are out there. It's got a lot of runtime on it. It's very secure uh, data encryption platform and management solution um, that's very well regarded. It's a very secure key management platform. We've walked through a number of the, uh, the, the security measures that are invoked through that platform to ensure that the keys and subsequently the data are well guarded. It's also simple automated key distribution. You don't have to worry about tremendous amounts of management overhead or time consumed uh, in invoking a solution such as this. It meets compliance requirements. Uh, for a lot of the federal folks, for a lot of the folks in the securities, uh, industry uh, and, and some other industries, having a FIPS compliant environment is very critical. It meets that requirement. For a lot of folks who are looking at future data growth and security enhancement requirements, uh, having something that provides an industry standard level of interoperability is also significant. The solution scales across a complete library environment, so all your libraries can be managed by it. And it's a very, very economical solution to put in place. Relative to going uh, without insurance or relative to being insured with other encryption key management solutions, uh, Spectra TKLM uh, is highly cost competitive and will indeed uh, reduce the overhead uh, and administrative costs associated with safeguarding your data. Now that we walk through uh, the, the initial uh, data security issues, some of the answers to those issues with Spectra TKLM. Uh, now that we've talked through the product, uh, the, the initial implementation, the feature sets, uh, the availability, what's required for installation, and who some of the target markets are, we can go ahead and open up the forum now for any questions that uh, uh, any of the listeners may have. Okay, thank you, John. Outstanding overview. And for uh, any of you who do have questions, please use the chat box to write those in. Uh, we will read them out. We've already had a couple come in. And uh, John, some of these may have come in um, a little before you addressed them in the presentation. We've had a, a couple uh, come in as you've been speaking. Uh, but several uh, relate to the ability to take legacy keys and manage them under a new encryption system. So if I summed those up, uh, basically there, there, you, you addressed some issues around this, but specifically, can you load keys from a legacy key manager into the TKLM manager. You talked about partitioning the libraries for, for legacy stuff and letting it eventually age out, but would you be able to take uh, those keys from a leg legacy system and have TKLM actually manage them? Uh, that's a really good question, Bob, and that's a, a, an issue that a lot of users face. Most of the key management platforms out there were built and distributed uh, into the market before there was any kind of standards body in place uh, to, to develop standards to which everybody could adhere to for uh, the distribution and sharing of keys across devices, let alone key managers. As a result of this, most key management platforms uh, that were early to market were very proprietary in nature and focused on securing the keys within that key manager and making it as difficult as possible to get them out for obvious reasons. As a result of that, at this point in time, uh, it's not really possible to get keys out of, uh, let's say, uh, an Oracle key manager, for instance, just to take one as an example, or directly out of an old day crew key manager uh, as a second example, and import those directly into the speculatively key lifecycle management platform. As a result of that, that's why we have uh, put together a solution that allows users to uh, segment the library into partitions so that they can access the legacy data uh, through their old key manager as it ages out while 
uh, putting everything on a, an industry standard platform going forward that will be migratable. Gotcha. And and so uh, the, the partitioning of the library is really key. And I take it as there's less and less demand for those older uh, tapes to be brought back. You can make that partition. You can allow it to grow smaller and smaller. You can just configure it down and down and down. Is that is that a correct assumption? That, that would be absolutely correct, and that's what a lot of users are doing. Um, the alternative to that would be to read back all the data using the uh, legacy encryption key manager and then rewrite the data through uh, the use of the TKLM encryption key manager. At that point in time, users are looking at what is effectively a media migration uh, practice rather than simply a, a library sharing practice. So once again, they've got a number of different options. It just depends on uh, which is going to be most feasible for the user in terms of uh, timeliness, in terms of uh, uh, cost, and in terms of usability. Gotcha. And I know a media migration is usually a very large task, but if that's something that someone is getting ready to do, um, then this it might make sense to make that transition as they do the media migration as well and kind of uh, get two birds with one stone, so to speak. Absolutely. We have uh, customers out there who have um, you know data that was encrypted through one of the legacy fabric-based encryption managers. Uh, it was put on uh, LTO3 drives, uh, for instance and now they want to move to LTO5 or they may be actually getting ready to move to LTO6, in which case it's going to be a complete media migration. Uh, and that happens to be a very good point in time for them to change key managers because if they've got to read all that data from one piece of media to a newer generation, that's a perfect time to de-encrypt it and then re-encrypt it using TKLM uh, as part of the, uh, the new uh, configuration. Okay, great. And we're, we're getting a few more questions uh, as you speak. Uh, how can we, is this right? Yes. How can we integrate with other endpoint encryption systems like DPM? Um, right now, Spectra TKLM uh, isn't really built to accept keys from endpoint encryption uh, key management devices. Um, that's not to say it won't happen somewhere down the road in the future, but uh, you know, we would need to be working closely with IBM to build the business case for that and, and look at uh, what implementations would be best served to, to be developed first. Okay. And uh, one more question. It says, do you see encryption standards changing? Will this be a problem for existing uh, encryption installations in the future? Well, I, I so guess there are a couple... You, you mentioned the KMIP standard. Is, it, does it look like that's going to have a, a fairly long life, or what would you say? I would say that's going to have a long life. Uh, I mean, just about everybody in the industry has signed on to that, from IBM to HP to, to EMC to Thales to uh, effectively everybody that's got an encryption key management solution today has, has, has signed on to that. Uh, I don't see that changing any time in the foreseeable future. Uh, there may be some evolution with regard to standards as things are added or changed or modified somewhat, but as a, an overall standards uh, body and uh, standards platform, I don't see that changing a lot. And, and, you know, we've seen this in the past. The beauty of having now a standard that people have agreed on is if they do make changes, they realize that's going to affect others, and they take that into account, and it, it typically gives you some kind of bridge or some kind of solution as they make changes. That's correct. All right. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and one last question, uh, unless we get another one, is why does TKLM only support LTO5 and onwards? What do you suggest for LTO4 users? Well, so um, Spectra TKLM is only supporting LTO5 and later drive types, and that really has to do with the use of the MAM chip on uh, the, the tape media cartridges. Uh, given some of the things that Spectrologic does with regard to uh, media health data and other uh, pieces of uh, tape biometric data, if you will, that we store on that, uh, between that and the data that uh, TKLM is using, there's just not enough room for all of the above in the LTO4 MAM space. And so that's why uh, we're supporting LTO5 and above because it's got a little more space available to us uh, for all the things that we like to do uh, with the media in terms of our certified media, uh, uh, which we provide to customers. 
Gotcha. And I know we've done full dedicated webinars to our media lifecycle management and certified media uh, approach to managing media. So uh, a lot of great features there, but it does take some room on that that little MAM chip within the uh, LTO cartridge. Uh, So I guess if if people are working with LTO3 or LTO4, there would still be the option of Spectra's own own blue scale encryption key manager, correct? Well, for LTO3, uh, they could do so, but it would not be drive-based encryption since the LTO3 did not provide that. Gotcha, uh, right, but, right. But for LTO4, yes, they they could use the blue scale encryption key management within the library uh, in support of their LTO4 tape drives. Okay, great. And if anyone on the call today is interested in the blue scale uh, key encryption, then a lot of information on our website about that, including, I believe, some some videos and some recorded webinars, so you could uh, you could pick up a little bit more on that. Absolutely. All right. It looks like those are uh, the end of the questions. Thank you, uh, John, for presenting today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, if you like any more information on Spectra TKLM or any of the Spectra uh, features or product sets, please go to spectralogic.com and uh, surf away and give a call if you have any questions. Thank you, everyone.